Hello everyone, Nick from Homebrewer Gaming here, featuring the Cheeks' Challenge and Orcs deck from the first set of Clash, the Von Guzer Prophecy. Now, if you guys have already seen Splug Surprise and Gobs and Benke's Bash and Farmers, basically what I'm going to describe in this is the same thing. I'm going to introduce the cards and whatnot, and also just mention that um, on the Game Crafter, these are now featured on the Game Crafter, they are the decks, obviously. But um, as you can see right here, uh, the product comes with a deck box. For this one, it's Cheeks' it's Challenging Orcs. It shows the artwork of some of the orcs or some of the uh, minions in the deck. It shows the name from what set it is. And it also shows on the back. Let me uh, focus this a little. There we go. It has the name. It has a little explanation. And it also shows the cards included. Um, along with this, with the deck, we also have the instructions, which are right here. The first page in the instructions are the act is the actual text. So as you can see, I just have to focus real quick. So as you can see, we have ourselves like um, events and circumstances, stuff like that. Basically, a um, detailed explanation of the rules, but it still provides everything you need to understand the game very thoroughly. And along with that, there is an assist page. Basically, it shows. Um, uh, as you can see right here, like player side of the field, player side of the clash, and it gives you the basic layout of the cards and the field itself, so people can get into the game really quick. Uh, as you can see here, we have the events and circumstances, surprises, and if you see in the other videos, I basically uh, introduced this as well. Uh, right here is just a little tidbit for Homebrew Gaming, some links uh, to get to our videos for games and more. So um, aside from that, that is the instructions manual that comes with the decks. And from here, since we already saw the deck box, it is now time to get into the actual cards. So, uh, most of the stuff I'm going to be mentioning here, aside from the different cards, is going to be everything mentioned in the videos. Uh, these are the card backings. It is very nice quality. Um, it is lighter, like um, the stock is a little lighter than most trading cards, but it's still very amazing quality. It has. Um, very durable. I can like apply quite a bit of pressure to this, and it still keeps its form. Keeps its form, and um, basically they're great to play with. They're much easier to play with than with paper. But I mean, I completely understand if you guys um, are playing with paper. But these, at the same time, are great. You can hold on to them. You can basically uh, bring them around. They're much more durable. They won't blow in the wind. As a great example, that was something that happened with my friends and I all the time. But from there. I'd like to introduce the cards in this deck, and you'll see some that are similar to the ones in the Ars decks, but above all, the new ones are going to be the ones that people will love the most, especially if you came from the R2 videos just before. Now, this deck is mainly centered around, it's slower, but it has stronger minions in it, and it's basically uh, the opposite of Splug, Surprise, and Gobs. It is much slower, but it has more power, it's not as quick, um, and obviously because of the power, there's not going to be as many weaker minions in here. But um, also the deck centers around buffing things as much as you can. It will take a while, but it is worth it if you can keep it in the long run. So starting things off, uh, we're going to be off at a very interesting start actually, because we start off with the Flasher, which is a level 2 element minion. I'm going to bring this a little closer now. There we go. Uh, Flasher is a level 2 element minion with only 20 buffs. So basically everything I just said, this guy is... The opposite. Uh, as you see right there, JTL, this was initially drawn by our friend James. Thank you very much, James. Uh, the effect of this card is when your opponent calls a clash, you may immediately play this flasher in that clashington. If you do, it does not cost an action to play. This card is one of the very few cards, as I have in the other decks, is basically like a balancing card. This card works a little against the rest of the deck, just as it means to be make the deck itself more versatile. So. Um, it's actually a pretty good idea that we start off with something like this as opposed to seeing it down the line where when we're talking about all the um, uh, buffiness that's gained to minions, um, this will be mentioned. So speaking about how buffiness is gained, we're going to start off, aside from Flasher, with a Dirt Speaker, the level 1 15 buff Spirit Minion who is also featured in the Farmer's deck. His effect is when the Dirt Speaker is slapped out, the slapping minion gains 10 buffiness. So when you're playing bigger orcs and stuff like that, you're going to be playing this guy more in the level 3 or level 2 slots as opposed to level 1. You can still play on level 1, it really doesn't matter, but obviously if you want to keep your big guys out for a little longer, because especially with some of the cards featured in the Gob deck, there are a lot of buffy damage cards that can uh, work really well against the basic level threes. 
So Dirt Speaker, great card to keep in mind, versatile, and so forth. Now Clash Jr. is one of those cards that it makes minions unconscious, but as opposed to the gobs or the farmers, like the farmers have knockout cards that are very general. Uh, the gobs deck has knockout cards that work well if you have a lot of lower level minions. This works well if you have a lot of high buffiness minions. It is a is an level. It is an action cost, a one action cost basic event. And its effect is you and your opponent choose conscious means you each control in this Clashington. Those means are dealt buffy damage equal to the opposing minions buffiness. So if you have bigger minions in your side of a Clashington, this will basically guarantee a knockout on your opponent's side. You can incorporate with some other cards, but for the most part this will only be used if you have bigger baddies on your side of the field. Cannonball Buster. Uh, one of the versatile cards, zero action cost, I am circumstance. Its effect is at the beginning of your turn, place a power token on this cannibal buster, and you can remove all power tokens from it and make it inactive to have an enemy mean the Clash of Tin be dealt buffy damage equal to 10 times the amount of power tokens that was removed from Excuse me. That was removed from it. So this is another just general knockout card. This is more featured in the farmer's deck because, as I said, it has more general knockout or, like, general unconscious effects. So I incorporated this card into here because circumstances um, are mainly for buffing and you'll see the other one which is basically going to be the opposite of room for one more. But it's just an extra card in there just to add a little more pizzazz to it I guess you could say. Bully Beetle. The uh, the final one part of the trio with Bugging and Blitz Beetle it is a level 1 bug minion with only 5 buff despite the fact that it's a Bully Beetle. But its effect compensates for that. This Bully Beetle gains 10 buffiness for each conscious level 2 or higher minion you control in this Clashington. This card will be great if you have high level minions, which in this deck you obviously do have. So this guy can easily become a 25 buff level 1 minion, which is amazing. So keep this guy in mind when you're playing the bigger guys because he will be great to have in your level 1 slot. Now Blitz Beetle, level 1, 10 buffiness. Playing the Blitz Beetle does not cost an action and only one can be played per turn. This is another one of those speed cards if you... It's basically counteracting the slow tempo of this deck. And that's one of the reasons why this deck is more, I wouldn't say favorable, but is more versatile in the sense that with this counteracting balance incorporated into the deck, it won't feel as slow as you would expect it to. So with this guy, you're able to call the Clash a little faster because he could play, be played on the field at the cost of no actions. And although he's only 10 buff, your bigger guy should be enough to basically knock out the Clashington and make you win. Battle in a Bottle. This is an R item circumstance. It is zero actions, and its effect is pretty peculiar. All effects of circumstances, besides Battle in a Bottles, in this Clashington are negated. This is basically the best way to just negate circumstances in general in a Clashington. And at zero actions, if your opponent spent an action to play their circumstance, this makes sure that you gain that slight tempo. Now keep in mind that it says that the effects are negated, so that means that the cards remain in they remain active because they're not made inactive by the effect, but your opponent will probably try to make this inactive somehow in order to make sure that their circumstances will work again. For the two of us, this is the counterpart of Room for One More. Notice how it costs an action, and the reason why is because it's a basic bleh, because it is a basic circumstance whose effect is while this for the two of us is active, your main slots in this question become two level 3 or below slots. So this is great because although you only have two slots now, you can play bigger things in one of those slots. And with the fact that there's only two slots now, it's much faster to call the Clash. As such, that kind of explains why it costs an action to play, but if you can work around that and still play very well, and you can put two big level 3 mains in it, this card can be quite remarkable throughout gameplay. The Buffening. This is a very general, versatile card, zero action cost, basic circumstance. While this the buffening is active, means you control in this clash to gain five buffiness. As I was saying about this deck, it's all about gaining buffiness, and this card basically incorporates it. Not much to say here, just to the fact that it does what it says, and people love it for what it is. Alright, Slowpoke. Level 2, Orc Minion. 35 buff for level 2, which is quite remarkable, but this is where you start seeing the slow tempo of the game. When you play the Slowpoke, you lose your action in this Clashington on your next turn. So although you get 35 buff for level 2, which is quite remarkable, you're going to be losing an action. So if you have something like Rush of Sugar to work with that, it won't be as bad, but at the same time, you have to make sure you're prepared. Because you're going to be losing an action, so you have to work around that as best you can. Recruiter. Level 3 Orc Minion only has 30 buff 
but his effect is quite good. When you play this recruiter, you search your deck for a level 2 or lower minion, reveal it, then put it into your hand. You then shuffle your deck afterwards. This guy is great because there's a lot of level 3 minions in this deck, and to get those level 1s and 2s out faster, this guy will help you reach that. So, as I said before, it is quite slow tempo at some parts, but cards like these will help you push things along a little faster. Now, this guy might actually get slapped out down the line just because there are stronger level 3s, but he is a great level 3 to play at the start because it could fetch you that level 1 or 2 you need. Papers, please. A versatile card mentioned in the Gobs and the Farmer's deck. It is a one action cost basic event, lets you draw two cards. Another straightforward card like the Buffeting, and it works great in almost any deck. And especially in this one because it counteracts the slow tempo. Orc Babby. Level 1, 30 buffiness. 30, no. 10 buffiness. That would be insane. 30 for level 1. Uh, 10 buffiness, Orc Minion. And its effect is while this Orc Babby is conscious, level 3 minions you control in this Clashington gain 10 buffiness. This is great because it can become a 20 buff level 1 minion, hypothetically speaking, if you have a level 3, which is pretty great. On its own, it's not too great, but as such, it has the potential to become, or at least give our thing as much more power, and makes it more of itself a target than anything else, because you don't want to have uh, your bigger guys being hit as much with buffy damage or any other effects. In Zombiac, level 2 zombie minion, 25 buff, and his effect is if this in Zombiac would become unconscious, return it to your hand. Essentially, this is one of the level 2 minions in this deck that makes sure that although your level 1 or 2s are more likely to get knocked out, this one can keep on coming back. So this is a great card to have in the defensive position at 20 buff for level 2. That's not that bad at all. Dirt Speaker, we've already seen. Club Orc, this guy. Level 3 Orc minion with 40 buffiness. Although he has no effects, his flavor text reads, Time heals all wounds unless you get bonked on the head by this orc's weapon. This guy is quite amazing. He could be endgame on quite a few circumstances, but um, he's just a straightforward basic minion, and I've seen a lot of people play him just because 40 buff, you can't complain about that whatsoever. So, moving onward, we have Cheeks, who is our VIP orc minion, or at least the VIP of this deck. Level 3, 35 buff. He is a VIP, so that means you can only have one of him on the field at any time, but his effect is he gains 5 buffiness for each other conscious VIP minion on the field. Although he doesn't incorporate that well in this deck, he incorporates well against anything that involves VIPs. And if there's just another VIP man, he's basically a club orc. If there's more than one, he's greater than a club orc. So, although he's kind of basic at first, he can become strong pretty quick if your opponents are playing some really neat things. And if you are actually playing VIPs as well, if you incorporate them into this deck, then that's even better. Bully Beetle, we have seen. Bruiser Batty, a level 2, 25 buff beast minion. His effect is when you play this Bruiser Batty, you may deal 10 buffy damage to a minion in this Clashington. One of the other forms of removal in this deck is another level 2, so um, he's just another counterbalance kind of card. Make sure that you have a nice palette to work with. You have your buffy damage, you have your gaining in cards and actions. But moreover, it's just a little more expansion to what this deck is. Big Brawler. This guy was mentioned in the Gobs deck video. He is a level 1, 15 buffiness. But his effect is he gains 5 buffiness for each conscious level 2 or higher minion your opponent controls in this Clashington. So if your opponent is playing something with bigger minions as well, this guy can become all the way up to a 25 buff level 1 minion, which is remarkable, as mentioned before. Keep this guy in mind because at level 1, your level 1 means might be suffering quite a bit in this deck, but with this guy at 25, he should handle himself pretty well. Bam. A 1 action cost basic event. It deals 15 buffy damage to a minion in the Clashington. Featured in the Farmer's deck as well, it's just a straightforward way to take out weaker minions and can help you gain the advantage in the game. The Buffening. Uh, I believe we already mentioned this card, yeah. So, uh, Slowpoke, we mentioned. Rush of Sugar. 0 action cost item event. Another very basic versatile card. Gain an extra action in this clashing in this turn. You cannot use that action to draw a card. Very straightforward. Amazing in counterbalancing these slow effects of this deck. Rush of Sugar is, as always, an amazing card. And if you don't have one, you should get one because it is great. Push some wayward. Uh, one action cost basic event. Its effect is you can move a conscious minion you control in this Clashington into an empty minion slot on your side of another Clashington. This could help if you want to move one of your baker guys into another Clashington in case things are not going as well in a certain Clashington. It's basically 
uh, insurance in a way or like a guarantee of that you get to keep some of your stronger minions. You can even use it on smaller ones as well, just depending on the situation. But at one action, it could be a little costly just for moving something, but at the same time, it could help with the tempo. Orc Babby has been mentioned in Zombiac, Flasher, Club Orc, Class Junior, Bully Beetle, Bruiser Batty, Big Brawler, Bam, War Kazoo. Believe it or not, there is a surprise event in this deck. It is a zero action cost surprise item event, which means it is placed sideways face down when you play it, and it triggers immediately when its effect would be triggered. So if your opponent causes a clash in the Clashington, you gain an extra action in that Clashington during your next turn. Another counterbalance card bleh, another counterbalance card to the um to basically the slow effects that some of the minions can have in this deck. Uh, War Kazoo is just an all around great card to give you that tempo. And in the next turn you keep in play stuff like Rush's Sugar to get even more actions. Sour Glass. Now this card is a little weird, but it is an item circumstance for zero actions. And the way how it works is at the beginning of your turn, you place a sour token onto it. There are three or more sour tokens on it. You can call the clash during your turn, regardless of whether or not you have met the requirement, which means if you have minions, like enough minions on the field to play it. So if you basically, like if things are waiting out too long, but like there's not that many minions going on in a clash, you can use this to just push things forward. And if you have like a club work in there, you can basically guarantee the clash if nothing else much is going on. A very circumstantial card as is, it is a circumstance. Um, Sour glass can be useful in some situations. Rush is sugar. Recruiter, Paypedo. This card can be amazing. It is like one of the biggest forms of removal and that is why the orcs have it. It is a one action cost item event, but when you play it, you must also discard a card to play this Paypedo. Um, the reason why is because it can make any minion of your choice in this Clashington unconscious, which is quite insane because most of them involve buffy damage or have some drawbacks to them. This one, all you have to do is discard a card. After that, it's your choice. So this can be quite amazing in this deck. And there is only one, but use it wisely. And the last card in the entire deck actually is Jelly Buffer. There's only one in here, and it is a level one minion, 10 buffiness ooze minion. And this one is pretty interesting because it can buff your other minions. Once per turn, only on your turn, you may have a minion you control in this clash tin. Besides this Jelly Buffer, gain five buffiness. If you do, this Jelly Buffer loses five buffiness. So basically it's spreading its buffiness to other minions. And after using its effect twice, it would become unconscious because its buffiness would be zero. Still, if you were to distribute that buffiness enough, then place a new minion, that's just more buff on the field for you to use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of Cheeks Challenge and Orcs. This deck is now available along with Banky's Bastion Farmers and, and Splug Surprise and Gobs on the Game Crafter. You can find the link to this in the description below or just go to our website at homebrewerygaming.com for more details. So as such, I am Nick from Homebrewery Gaming. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like. And as always, keep on clashing.